This is the Flywoo FlyLens 85. Now this is a medium sized whoop designed to use the DJI O3 ear unit, allowing you to get some really great footage in a small and light platform. Now the really interesting thing about this little quad is, is that it is designed to be used with the Flywoo's O3 Lite and O3 Ultra ear unit kit. If you haven't seen what that is, that is what allows you to get the DJI O3 ear unit as light as possible. And I actually have a separate video on that which I'll link to in the description if you're interested in seeing it. However, today we're going to talk about the FlyLens 85. I'm going to walk you through its features and capabilities and then at the end I'm going to share with you my thoughts having spent some time with it. Now just to be clear up front, Flywoo did send me this aircraft for free. However, they have not seen this video. They've not paid me to make this video and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so the model they've sent me here of the FlyLens 85 is the O3 one. This has built-in Express LRS 2.4. It is fitted with the Groku F405 2S AIO with Express LRS built in, and we'll take a look at that a bit more in a minute. And it's got the 1003 14,800 kV motors. Now, this one is specifically designed to be used with DJI O3, but there are other versions available. You can get it as a Avatar HD version, and you can get it with HD. HD0 and analog as well. Now, depending on what package you order will depend what you get in the box. Here is the basic drone. There's a leaflet included showing you the pinout of the flight controller, which is really nice to see. We've got the quad, and then we've got this little accessory bag. Now, when you order it on the Flywheel website, you can add additional items if you wanted. So, for instance, you can add other LEDs like I've got here. This drone does have LEDs built in as standard, but you can change the colours. And you can also order batteries for this quad as well. I was sent two of the 1000 milliamp hour models. However, you can order as many as you want. I don't believe they include them with the drone kit as standard. However, you can select the extras on the Flywheel website. So taking a closer look at the quad itself, now it is based around this composite frame. I'm not going to say it's carbon fibre because it doesn't look like carbon fibre. It's definitely a layered material. It's some form of composite. That is the rigid bit where we have our motors mounted, we have our camera plate and our AIO is built off that in the middle. We then have our plastic duct that is attached via some standoffs and then if I flip it over we then have our carrier down here for the O3 ear unit. Now this one is the O3 edition which comes with the harness pre-wired. It is designed to take a standard O3 ear unit but it will also take this which is the O3 ear unit light or ultra. Now I have a video on how to turn your O3 ear unit into this. I used the Flywoo kit on this one. I will put a link to that video in the description. I'll also put a card up in the corner for you as well where we completely tear down the ear unit strip it back to bare bones like I've done here this one is as light as it gets this one doesn't have the SD card so it's classed as the ultra and then you fit the camera plate on the back as well and that is what we're going to be mounting into this quad a little bit more later on now just to run you over the specifications on this the drone is based on the Groku F405 1-2S flight controller which has Express LRS built in now that Express LRS is based on a UART, it is not SPI based, so don't worry, you're not going to have any problems with updates. It is based on, as I've said, the F405, it has six UARTs, it supports four motors, and it also has I2C as well. And gyro-wise, it will either come with the ICM42688 or the MPU6000. It has a Beck on board, up to 5 volts, 2 amps, and the ESC that is built into it is capable of up to 12 amps and is based on BL Heli S. Motorwise, it is fitted with the Robo 1003s. Now, these are 14,800 kV and they come pre fitted with two inch two blade props. There's four on the quad itself, and there are some extras in the additions bag that they give you with the quad as well. Now, some other nice features on this version of the drone is that it does come pre wired for O3. There is a harness in there as well, and they've also pre fitted antennas for you too. You can see them there. Now, it does come with a battery strap fitted. This is for the 700. 50 milliamp hour one but again in the accessory pack there is a battery strap for the 1000 like I've got and that's what we're going to be using on this build. 
Now there are some real details on this quad I like. For instance, if we look at the camera mount at the front, it is on rubber isolators, which means that's gonna give you the best possible performance from that O3 camera, and hopefully should reduce some of the vibrations. You've also got some bling built into this as well, and there are LED strips, as I mentioned earlier, built into the duct that give a real nice effect on the quad when flying. Now this obviously isn't going to be for everyone, but as as you can see here, it really does light it up very nicely. I'm a big fan of stuff like this, although it remains to be seen the effect this would have on the camera, especially if you're flying in low light conditions. However, in daylight, I wouldn't expect it to be too much of a problem, but it does help with just being able to see the quad, especially when it's one of this size. Now, there are a lot of nice little touches on this frame that sort of show that Flywheel have put a lot of thought in. We've got the isolated mount for the O3 camera. There's these little TPU pieces that hold the cables in place by the motors. You've got the integrated antennas for the O3 pre-fitted and that USB port on the top that's easy to access as well. It just shows that Flywheel have put a lot of thought into what they want from this drone and it should just make for a much nicer overall user experience. Now, weight-wise, the quad itself comes in at 55 grams. And then if we add in an O3 Ultra E unit, we're coming in at a total of 73. And then if we toss a battery into the mix as well, you can see we're coming in at 120 grams. Now, obviously, if you were to use the 750 milliamp hour pack, that's gonna get some weight down and you can get it to around 100 grams in total. Now, just before we get into doing the build with the O3 ear unit, I should just show you what's included with the accessories. We just get this open. We have some spear props, which is always good. We have this little kit, and this is for mounting the O3 ear unit, and there's also some additional accessories in there too. We've got an Allen key and a screwdriver, which is really nice to see for taking it apart. We've got a USB cable for updating the firmware, and it's actually a right-angled one as well, which is interesting. Now, that is USB-C, which means that is not for the flight controller. That is actually for the O3E unit. And again, it just shows some of the thought that Flywheel have put in because they know you're going to have trouble getting to the firmware port or the USB port on the side of the O3E unit. So they're including a cable with it to allow you to easily do that. I really do like that. We've got a sticker. And then we've got our other battery mount. This is for the 1000 milliamp. I've got the 750 fitted. So that's one we're going to want to swap over as well. So the next thing I'm going to walk you through is how to install the O3 ear unit in this quad. Now, as I've said, it is designed to be used with that Flywheel kit, whether it be the light or the ultra. If you don't know what the difference between the light and the ultra is, basically one retains all the heat shielding cans as well as the SD card slot. That is classed as the light, whereas the ultra removes absolutely everything not needed. You do give up the ability to use the external SD card, but you do still have that 20 gigabytes of onboard storage that you can use with O3. So the first thing we're going to want to do is remove this little tray that holds the ear unit itself. You can see it's attached in four corners. So what we've got is a screw for that here, 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 and here. So what we're going to do is take the Allen key that they've included with the kit and start to remove these. Now you may find these are quite tight. I ended up having to actually loosen them the other way around first of all. I'm not going to completely withdraw the screw. All I'm going to do is undo it so hopefully that cage on the bottom will just pop off. There's no great need to remove the hole underneath on this. Now this gives us a nicer view of the internals of the quad. You can see the AIO down there and then we've got this little LED board from the look of it that is a power board that is then going off to the LED strips that are held in the side. So if you did want to replace those LED strips, all you would actually need to do is take the bottom off and you've got access to them there. Now, as I've said, because this is the O3 version, it comes pre-wired. There is a connector there ready to plug into the back of the O3E unit. And then we've got our antenna connections. Now, looking at this, the easiest way is going to be to get this mounted and probably mount it this way with the E unit P1 
pointing down. That way, I should have the best cooling on the P1 chipset in the ear unit itself. I'm not actually sure if they show in the instructions which way to do it, but I'm going to go with it that way and we'll see how it goes. Okay, now after a bit of fiddling with this, the way I've managed to work it out is we've got the camera cable going through there, which we'll sort out in a minute. That is then coming up underneath the ear unit there, and I'm just going to wrap that up underneath. And then we've got our antenna cables at the back here going down into there underneath. And what we're then going to do is try and get the ear unit to sit on there like that. We've got this housing, which then jumps over the top. And then what we need to do is just get it in the right place so everything squeezes in like that, tighten the screws down, and then we should be ready to go. Now, the next task is mounting the camera. Now, this is designed to be mounted with that Flywoo kit. So if you're going to do this, you do want to make sure that you are using this Ultra kit. That way, then, we can get the camera mounted. You can see... It simply slots in and then there's some screw holes on either side. It's a bit dark there to show you, but they do include a bunch of stuff in with the quad as well. So if we just look down, we've got some long screws, shorter screws, spears going all the way down, probably them for the camera off the top of my head, most likely. O3 unit screws there as well. Lots of spears, which is nice to see but these are the ones we're going to need. Now, something I've just spotted is included with the kit, they do have some screws and there's holes here to actually physically mount the O3 ear unit to the bottom of this plate. I don't personally feel the need for that. It's not going to move around. There's not really any chance of it hitting the main board, so I'm not concerned about doing that at all. However, you could do that if you wanted to, just to make sure that there's no chance of it moving around. You can see now that it's all installed, so we've got the camera on our plate there, all mounted nicely. We've then got the cable for the camera going underneath. What I'll do is I'll put some B-roll up to show you that in a second. And then we've got the O3 ear unit mounted in the bottom with the plug and the antennas on the back and there popped in there and overall that's the build ready to go okay now just showing you it there with the battery installed it's pretty balanced actually i've put the bigger uh, holder on for it now so i just need to check beta flight configure express lrs and then we'll get it for a fly now the first flight i'm going to quickly show you is just my shakedown flight it's at my usual test field this is just to make sure the quad works exactly as expected and then if you stick around long enough we'll take it off to somewhere a little bit more interesting now this was filmed on the O3 ear unit in 4K60 with Rocksteady turned off. I have though stabilised it in post with Gyroflow, but I will put a bit of footage up later on just to give you an idea of how the quad looks without any stabilisation at all.
Okay, now this last bit of footage is just to give you an overview of how the quad locks without stabilization. I'm not going to show you too much on this, but this is the first flight that I showed earlier. There is no stabilization on this at all. You may have seen in some of the footage that I showed you that you may have been getting a bit of jello here and there. On the days I flew the quad, it was very, very bright and there were no ND filters on, so we were getting a bit of jello making it through. But overall, I think it does a really good job. But if you are going to want to fly it, in very bright conditions you are going to want to look at getting a set of ND filters that is obviously not the same set you're going to want on a normal full-size camera whilst this quad will take the full-size camera and you may be able to get ND filters on it you're going to need modified ones to be able to go on this camera lens as a result of it being decased. Okay, so to share with you my thoughts on the Flylens 85. Now, I think this is a really nice little O3 quad. I am loving this new trend of small, lightweight O3 builds. This is on the larger side compared to some of the others, but it isn't too big in the sense of it doesn't need to carry a GoPro or any of the action cameras. You're getting the great footage from the O3 air unit. I think it sizes a about right for outdoor use. It is a little large for smaller indoor settings, but you could use it indoors as well, especially if you've got plenty of space. I think what Flywheel have done here is really interesting. I like the integration with their O3 Lite and O3 Ultra kit, although it is worth noting that you're going to need that kit to get the best from this aircraft setup. There are a lot of nice little touches that they've done here as well. I like the way they've put the USB port on the top of the board, nice and easy to access. I like the fact that they include a cable for you to be able to download the footage off that O3 ear unit, not having to force in a normal USB one. Flywheel have really done a lot of work on just the little touches on this quad, and I think most people will enjoy having O3 in an aircraft like this. Now, flight-wise and how it feels, overall it flies very well. It is a little bit floaty. I have had a comment that if you move the battery to the back position that I had it in, that helps. I didn't try it in the front position, but I did still notice it is just a little bit floaty here and there, but that is often the case with some whoops as well. You're getting that effect of the duct and also the air moving under it. Really, there is a lot to like here with very few downsides, and if you're interested in getting yourself a larger style O3 whoop, this is definitely going to be worth a look. Now, the kit you've seen here today with the Express LRS receiver is available for about $150. You can also get it with Crossfire as well as other receiver options too. It is also available as a full bind and fly with that O3 ear unit pre-installed and that's available for $430 onwards depending on your receiver choice. Okay, that's it from me on this one. Now, I'm really interested in knowing what you think about this quad. Please do put any comments and questions below and I will try and answer them. I want to say a big thank you to Flywoo for sending this one over. If you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to it in the description. Finally, I just want to say if you like what you've seen on the channel, please do make sure you are subscribed. And if you'd like to support us, there is a link to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons for their support. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.